what is cryptography okay the cryptography as you know a process of okay conversion using mathematical okay algorithm so using mathematical algorithm okay are uh, taking into the information the data and which is readable okay readable data so in the in the shape of package or in the shape of communication and converting totally into a data of unreadable okay so uh, just using the mathematical algorithm converting your information into a data which is unreadable so readable data is converted into unreadable data sometimes it is called a cipher text okay so this kind of conversion is called cryptography so uh, we know that there are two processes of conversion from the information okay the simple text to the cipher text we can use encryption so conversion by the forward okay forward direction is called encryption and reversing from the data to the information the reverse is called as decryption so encryption and decryption these are the two processes inside the cryptography so okay this is very simple understanding about the cryptography just to make okay the information hidden by using the mathematical algorithm so algorithm is the main idea in between every cryptography okay, conversion so uh, we will study okay, all these okay, public key cryptography and message authentication here in this chapter. So the first one is the hash function. So this is the first okay, mathematical function, hash function. And this is uh, simply just hash okay, mathematical function. And in this one, okay, uh, the input that, that is a message or a file of user which is going to be encrypted is okay is viewed as a sequence of n bit blocks so it is considered as the input the message as a sequence of n bit blocks so these n bit blocks are okay processed one block at a time so one block at a time in iterative manner it means repeated way okay uh, so every time okay taking one block and just putting encryption putting okay using the hash function okay using hash function uh, converting it into cipher text then taking another block and converting it into hash uh, into the cipher text using the hash function and so on so one by one everyone so uh, and that produces okay n bit of hash function okay. so this is all about this okay, simple hash function uh, in this one, okay, you can see one of the simplest hash function is bit by bit, okay, ex exclusive or XOR, okay, is like this one. So let's say, okay, uh, we have the first one, BI1, BI2, these are the bits, okay, up to BIM, okay. So here, okay, BIJ, ith bit in the J block. So the last one, okay, uh, this one, okay from one two three up to n are the blocks so there are m blocks inside this okay uh conversion and also at the same time okay uh, there are i bits so there are okay i bits inside okay this conversion so all together using the exclusive r operation on all of them okay so exclusive r if you can remember mathematically it is true this xor is true if one of the input is true okay this is uh, the functionality of xor operation so what does it mean it means that if we have uh, two values okay let's say two okay packages a or maybe uh, b1 b2 okay let's say this is b1 and this is b2 so if b1 and b2 are false then exclusive r will be false if uh, b1 and b2 is like true and false it will be true or if uh, b1 is false and b2 is true then the exclusive will be the true and if both of them 
are true, then it will be false. So this is a table, simple table for this, okay, exclusive R. So this R, this works for this operation, okay. So here, okay, we see that uh, exclusive R is operated in between these, okay, bits. And also, uh, by doing so, okay, we have uh, resulted a new, okay, combination that is CI. So CI is the ith bit of the hash code. So this is a hash code, okay, for ith, I, ith bit, okay, for i, uh, if there are n bits already. So you can think it as one of the bit, okay, ith bit of the hash code. So we have, okay, n bits. So we, ha we will have to finish it up to CI, CI2, CI3 and so on, up to n times, okay, like this one. So CIN will be the last one. So we will just process one by one all these, okay, using the ZOR operation and creating every time this, uh, the hash code, okay. So we will have a collection of CI1, C1, C2, C3 and so on up to CN, okay. So this is a collection of N hash code. For i so here ci is the i bit of the hash okay uh, so it is a very long okay, process if you can guess it but anyway uh, this is simplified by the mathematics so m is the number of okay n bit block inside this one okay okay uh, so this is all about okay this simplified hash function so okay uh, we use it here in the cryptography that's all the next one is about sha secure hash function so sha okay secure hash algorithm okay uh, was okay developed by uh, nist and uh, it is okay it, there since 19 okay 19th century okay uh, almost uh, uh, 1993 that's all so after okay invention of this SHA okay uh, further in 1993 okay a revised version was issued and that one is called FIPS 180-1 which is generally known as SHA1 so this is upgradation of SHA so first SHA was there, okay, and there after, okay, after revision, it became SHA1 by improvement process, okay. So SHA produces a hash value of 160 bits. So earlier, okay, SHA1 uh, was uh, able to produce, okay, a hash value of 160 bits. So we are talking about this, okay, these bits, see. So it was used to produce again okay, a hash value of 160 bits. Uh, later, okay, three new versions were invented of SHA. So with values uh, much increased in size, 256, 384, 512 bits. So these are the three, okay, uh, upgraded version uh, bits, right? So they are known as SHA 256, SHA 384, SHA 512, okay, like this one. So uh, they are collectively, okay, uh, collectively these hash algorithms are known as SHA2. So now we got SHA2, this one. So from SHA1 to SHA2, the next, next one, okay. So this is how, okay, the improvement happened for this one. And we have a comparison of these, all these, okay, uh, with the parameters, like message digest, uh, size, message size, block size, word size, number of steps, security. So these are, okay, some of the parameters. Let's say the message size is um, less than 2 to the power 64, then it will work for SH1, okay, like this way. 
SHA-256 will, with this mass size, okay, will have, okay, um, this, okay, massive digest size. If you compare with this one, it will be much bigger. And all these are, okay, compared here for each and every one. So this is a very simple, okay, table for comparative SHA-1 to up to SHA-512, okay, all these things. So let's move to the next one. So SHA, okay, 512, we will just go a little bit more okay, introduction about SHA 1512. So in the 512, okay, if you can think about, uh, SHA 512, the, the algorithm, okay, this one, takes input, okay, as input a message, like others, okay, the same way, with the maximum length, okay, of, with the maximum length of less than, Okay, two one two eight bits. So this is interesting. This is different. So it takes okay uh, with a maximum length of less than two one two eight bits, okay, and produces output five one two bits message digest. Okay, so this is okay the difference SHA five one two. So that's why it is called five one two because it it produces five one two output okay bits. Uh, the input is processed in okay 1024 bit talk I will show you the figure later okay and so it uh, it is processed in 1024 bit blocks and uh, it depicts okay uh, figure is uh, oh, this is the figure if I can show you okay so this is the okay block 1024 bit okay and uh, n times okay and l bits and 128 bits here, right? And the message, okay, is in the different chunks, 1024 bit, 1024 up to, okay, the last one. So these are the messages, blocks, uh, different small packages, you can think like this. And also uh, at the same time, okay, if you can compare, uh, we are applying here, okay, uh, 1024, like this one, and using the hash function okay here 512 uh, the sha 512 here we are creating finally by the combination of this uh, function and the block combined together we are creating okay a function okay, this one so and thereafter okay together with h1 okay again so this is h0 h1 applied again and then produces again another function, okay, and so on. So these are okay, uh, produ producing all together HN hash code. Okay, this is important. So finally, it will create HN hash code. So this is okay, hash code that will be produced and it will be encrypted by that manner. This is the main idea. So okay, let's come back. So append okay padding bits so there are several steps to generate such kind of okay complex uh, cryptographic okay process so step one we have to append okay adding okay padding padding bits padding bits to add okay at the end pad okay at the end of the bits so the message is padded so that the length is congruent okay to 896 modulo uh 1024 length okay k 896 of mod 1024 so these these are just mathematical terms okay and padding is always added okay padding is always added even if message is already of the desired length so by doing so the number of padding bits okay here the number of padding bits is in the range of 1 to 1024 the padding consists of a single okay one bit followed by necessary number of zeros that's all in the step two okay appending adding the length okay so first we added the padding bits okay the end bits and 
now we are adding the length okay appending adding the length the block of okay 128 bits is added to the message number one and this block is treated as an unsigned 128 bit integer so most significantly okay uh, most significant byte okay at first so the most significant means the most important okay by first so most important will be if you can guess to the will be at the left side so let's say we have a number 628 so the most significant will be this one and after this one and then this one this is the usual mathematics so we are applying the same uh, technique okay, for the more finding the most significant by first so we are not treating okay uh, in this cryptographic processing the uh, decimal number but we are taking inside the binaries okay so that's why uh, the most significant will be in terms of by not the decimal number and the content uh, and uh, it contains okay the length of original message so before the padding okay so original message message in the step three okay we initialize hash buffer so initializing hash buffer means uh, putting some value okay, inside the hash and this is done by a 112 bit buffer is used okay to hold intermediate and final result of hash function and the buffer can be represented as eight 64 bit registers okay so these are the memories okay where we put our okay all these bits so a b c d e f g h or you can think like this okay registers so registers are simply you can think as as per electronics okay or uh, it is a high speed okay memory so these registers are used to keep the values inside so okay uh, let's move these registers are okay, initialized to the 64-bit integers. So, uh, hexa and these integers are hexa, okay, hexadecimal values. In the fourth step, okay, the process message in uh, the process, okay, message in 124-bit. So, processing the message in 124 bits, you can think like this. Uh, means 128 words blocks so the heart of okay, algorithm is a, mo a module that consists of 80 rounds and this module is labeled f in the figure okay, here the same f as you can see okay so uh, here, okay, the logic, uh, okay, we have already seen the figure, that's okay. The step, okay, five, uh, this is step five, See, look here. So in the step five, output, Natija, after all, okay, and 124-bit blocks have been processed, the output, okay, from the nth stage is the 512-bit message digest, okay, this one. So this will be the result, okay? Digest, like this one. So this is all about, okay, this message digest generation using uh, SHA-512, the most complex one. Okay, uh, let's move to the next one, okay? So here, okay, we are uh, in the figure for the SHA-512 processing of a single 1024-bit block. So here we can see message schedule is M1, MI is underway, and this is H, okay, I minus one. So here we are using the words. If you can remember, words are there, and also uh, by this, okay, H I one, we are putting, okay, if you can remember A B C D, okay this one we are talking about this one registers okay so these are the registers so inside the register we are putting these values okay and 
using the key k0 okay. so by doing so round zero it will process a to h all these okay values and thereafter okay uh, we will go to the round two and three and so on up to round uh, 79 and so on okay so from zero to 79 if you can count there are 80 rounds okay all together and it will finally generate okay uh, these hashes is too much less but uh, finally uh, by combining these hashes okay we will create a final hash this one okay function so uh, this is uh, SHA 5.2 processing of single 1024 bit block that's all so okay uh, so this is a little bit complex but uh, it is mathematically done by the computer so the complexity gets reduced by the processing of the computers so that's why we are not okay, in the bad position to run such kind of algorithm using computers okay uh, so that's all for this one let's move to the next one okay hmac design objective so we are now talking about okay hmac design so uh, the uh, design objectives for hmac is as follows so to use without modification available hash functions okay in particular hash functions that perform well in software and for which code is freely and widely available so we have to ensure that the code is freely and widely available so then we can use it right the number two is to allow for easy replaceability of the embedded hash function so this means uh, we can easily replace so we should find okay uh, this objective we should have this objective in our mind that uh, during the design replaceability is another factor uh, in case of faster or more secure hash function okay, uh, what are, that are found or required within the cases okay and to preserve the originality original performance the original performance of hash function without incurring a significant okay, degrade, degradation without any degradation without any failure and also okay uh, we are talking about number four okay uh, to use and handle keys in a simple way so we must think about okay during the design okay stage that using okay uh, usability okay to use and handle such kind of keys okay uh, must be simplified okay, in a simple way so so that we can okay use it easily that's all the meaning is like this to have a well understood okay well understood cryptographic analysis of the strength of the authentication mechanism okay the strength of authentication mechanism based on a reasonable assumption of the embedded hash function so this is the fifth one so uh, if you can see the first two objectives okay are important to the acceptability of hmac okay hmac and uh, the HMAC treats, okay, HMAC treats the hash function as a black box. So uh, the hash function can consider as a black box. You input something, you got something output. Okay, we cannot see inside the mechanism which are going on inside the hash function because it is totally a mathematical function. So only a mathematician can tell the story for all these things. But okay, uh, that's all for this okay, HMAC. So let's go to the HMAC algorithm. Okay, so I think there's some figure. Yeah, okay, to one twenty-one point four. This one. So here, okay, in this figure, if I can show you at the same time, no. So okay, let's see the algorithm first. Then we go to the figure. 
So this fi uh, figure, which will I will show you later, with uh, uh, it's illustrates okay the overall operation of overall operation of HMSA. So uh, that defines okay the following terms. Here the H is embedded hash function okay, and the M is okay message input. The YI is ith okay block of m message and l is number of blocks in m message number of blocks of m okay b is number of bits in a block n is length of hash code okay and k is secret key okay you can think like this so let's jump into the figure so k okay if you can remember the key okay and in pad okay it is just exclusive uh exclusively odd together okay and it is going to s so s is uh s is not here okay so what is s oh uh, i think where is s no not here okay so s uh the s is okay simply you can think it as a pre padding because before that okay uh oh, s is the result actually if you can think that it is the key and ipad excluded uh, exclusively all together making such kind of okay uh s block together with the y0 y1 up to yl minus one so this y is as you can see is the ith block of message so this is okay uh, the block of message you can think like this okay so this is a block of message together with this si which is generated from here okay that's all and together okay a uh, combination of these okay blocks we have created a hash uh, but before that okay uh, n bits are employed inside so okay uh, here okay uh, we can see the n bits are moving the hash n bits are okay moving to the h s i okay parallel m okay and then and here okay k plus an o pad are exclusively all together and making s0 and the rest of the things are here which are hashed together here if you can remember all these okay hashed together in the same way we are using now this one and this one together hashing together again and also okay at the same time the same process okay the same okay process employed inside n bit keys uh, also together and finally okay hmac km key and message okay are in input in this hmsc so the messages okay you can think like this message and the keys are okay uh, individually not completely are employed inside like this one okay uh, actually these are the keys not this one okay. so k plus okay is equal to k padded with zero so k plus is this one is k padded with zeros on the left so that the result is b bits in the length ipad is uh, binary 00110110 36 in hexadecimal okay Re repeated okay b by eight times and opad is a binary 010 okay and 010 uh, was 11100 5c in hexa okay hexa representation and represented as b by eight times then hmsc can be expressed as okay hmsc km this one is equal to h hash okay uh, k plus opad okay and h k plus ipad together with m message that's all so this is actually a very complex mathematical okay representation which are employed inside our encryption process okay. 
Okay. Okay, let's move to the next one. The next type is RSA, okay, encryption algorithm. So the RSA public key encryption algorithm is such like this, okay. So uh, I will show you, okay, exactly what's going on. Uh, the key generation is one process where we have two, okay, P and Q, uh, the, uh, the numbers which are prime in nature and they are not equal and we are selecting p and q i'm calculating the multiplication multiplication of both p and q that is this n and so on and and so on and so forth okay that this one i will show you all these things okay in the next slide there's this one okay so uh encryption okay uh, key generation is the first step then encryption is the second one and decryption is the last one so uh, in the, if you can see, we can have okay, encryption key, uh, key generation by uh, following all these processes. And finally, after the generation of the key, we can use the key to encrypt any message like this one. So the plain message is encrypted using the key, okay? Uh, and it becomes cipher, okay? Encrypted text like this one and decrypt using the same key, okay, uh, we can just decrypt our message back to the normal text, okay, that's all. So uh, the whole process is like this in different steps. So this is an example of RSA. So here, okay, the first step is, let's say we have uh, two numbers, P and Q, and uh, they must be prime number. Prime numbers are those numbers which cannot be divided by any other number, any smaller number. For example, let me show you another prime number, 9. So 9 can be divided by 3, so it cannot be actually prime number. But let's say I, if I choose number 3, 3 is a prime number. Why? Because it cannot be divided by 1, 2, or 3. Uh, no, just one, two, okay? It can be divided by three only, okay? Not by one and two. So this is why it is prime number. A prime number cannot be divided by a smaller number. It can be divided only by its own number, okay? This is the definition of prime number. So let's say you write a prime number, 17. So 17 cannot be divided by one, two, three, four, five, up to 16, no. We cannot divide 17 by any of these numbers. So that's why it is prime number. Uh, I will give you one more example. Let's say we have a number seven. So seven cannot be divided by any number, one, two, three, four, up to six. We cannot divide. So that's why seven is a prime number. So we are taking two prime numbers, select two prime numbers, P and Q, 17 and 11, and calculate N, the multiplication of p and q okay 17 into 11 187 then calculate the function n okay which is uh, equal to p minus 1 q minus 1 so 17 minus 1 16 and 11 minus 1 is 10 okay like this one select e said that e is relatively prime to the function Okay, 160 and less than function. So we choose e equal to 7. Okay, so uh, is it okay? So we are selecting e, okay, said that e is relatively prime to. There should be a okay, condition that it should be prime. It should not be, okay, uh, non-prime number. So you can, if I, if you can remember, I just know I told you seven is a prime number. So now we are okay, selecting seven, okay, as a okay, E. So E should be, okay, relatively prime to function 168, okay? So what does it mean? So this means related to 160, okay? This E should be chosen in such a way that the number should be prime and it should be relative to uh, function, okay, which is 
uh, now calculated as 160, it should be prime to this number also. So this means if you divide 167, is it okay, possible or not? No, not really. Okay. So that's why we have chosen seven. That's all. Okay. okay. Now you understand. You got it. So determine. Okay. Uh, D. Okay. Uh, set that D mod 160 is equal to one and D less than 160. So D the mod function okay, mod operator. So D mod 160 equal to one and D equal to 160. So the correct value of D is 23 because why? Because 23 into seven okay, will be 161, okay? Not 160, remember? So which is equal to one into 160 plus one. Okay, see here. So that's why we have chosen D equal to 23. Because the condition is D should be less than 160. Okay. So D is less than 160. Okay. Also, uh, D mod, okay, mod the modulus of okay, 160, D mod, okay, 160 should be equal to 1. So uh, here is the one, okay, right? From here, okay. Oh, no, not this one. This is the remainder, not this one. This is one, D mod, okay, like this one. Okay, uh, okay, let's see. Uh, wait a second, let me finish. So the resulting key, okay, the resulting keys are public key, PU, public key, uh, 7 and 187. So the 7 that comes from here, okay, if you can see here, the 7E, okay, and 187 is the P into Q, this one. So N, okay, if you can see, this is N and this is E, EN. So E here, 7 and 187. So the so the resulting keys are public key, uh, which is a collection of E and N. If you think about uh, this E, okay, and this N, like this one. And private keys are 23 and 187, okay? This 23D, you can think like this D, okay? This is D, and 187 is P into Q, this is N, okay? DN. So the example shows the use of these keys okay? for a plain text input of message size 88. Okay, this one. So this is all about, okay, uh, complete calculation. That's all. So for encryption, we need to calculate C equal to 1 uh, equal to 88 to the power 7 mod okay 187 this one so this is a heavy okay calculation that's uh, that is done by computers only okay so this is all about the example of rsa okay uh let's go to the security of rsa so the security of RSA, uh, uh, four possible approaches okay, are there to, to attack RSA algorithm. Number one is brute force. This involves, okay, this involves trying to, uh, trying all possible private key. So let's say the hackers has okay, applied brute force and uh, it has hacked the private keys. Then it is possible to hack the entire security and dec uh, decrypt all the uh, cryptographic, okay, encrypted, okay, all the, uh, data, that's all. Uh, the second one possibility is mathematical attack. So there are several approaches, okay, in mathematically applying different algorithms uh, to find out the exact one, exact algorithms. So all, okay, 
equip uh, is all equivalent in the effort to factor factoring the product of two prime keys. So remember PQ. So uh, they are trying to find out one by one uh, the P and Q values. Timing attack, the next one. So uh, this depends on running time. So, so it depends on running time of the decryption algorithm. So during the uh, processing of algorithm decryption process, let's say the attacker has got some chance to uh, got uh, to get the some of the idea that what is going on inside, and then he can use it to exploit the entire cryptographic okay algorithm. And choose the ciphertext. This one attack. So whatever has been encrypted in the ciphertext, so uh, the attacker will choose. So this type of tag okay exploits the properties of RSA algorithm. This law. So the difference again, the brute force approach is the okay same for RSA as for other crypto systems namely use a large key okay so this is important large key space so using a bigger key is the alternative for uh, reducing such kind of attack if you have a big key a bigger size of key then you are probably less threatened by such kind of attack and uh, thus the large okay size large number of bits in d is mandatory uh, however, okay, because of calculation problems, okay, there are one thing is there. If I can draw a graph for you that shows that whenever you increase the size of, of the uh, encryption uh, by increasing the num uh, the size of the key, okay, by increasing the number of size of the keys, okay, and then the performance will be reduced, okay, at the same time. So it will take longer for uh, encrypting or decrypting last size case okay so this is another uh, bad okay uh, opposite reverse effect so because of the calculations involved okay uh, both in case generation and in encryption decryption uh, the larger the size of the key the slower is the system that's what i told you by this graph okay that's, that's the main so a Hellman key exchange algorithm. So this is a kind of public key and okay, uh, uh, public key algorithm along with the private one. So public and private together. So the at first it was published as public key algorithm. Okay, uh, earlier like uh, then thereafter okay, the propo the proposal came in to change the algorithm and uh, it became the one of the interesting algorithm now so let's see what does what is the exact defi hellman algorithm is so the main idea uh, ideas are like this one uh, the purpose of this uh, of this algorithm is to enable two users to exchange secret key the private key okay securely uh, that can then be used to subsequent uh, use for subsequent encryption of messages. So the secret keys were used during the uh, network uh, traffic transaction. Uh, I mean, receiving and the packages is uh, to encrypt or decrypt the data. Okay, this one. The second thing is in this Defi Hellman algorithm, it depends for okay, it depends for its effectiveness on the difficulties okay of computing so this is a pretty easy okay and uh, just like rsa okay it is not so difficult so that's why it became more popular nowadays so let's see what does it it, it exactly okay look like so the thing is okay like this one uh, the diffie helmet key exchange algorithm uh, as you can see now, okay, in the figure, uh, we have uh, the global public element. Okay, this one. 
and then user uh, generates the key okay user a key generation happens and thereafter okay for the second user another key generation okay and the generation of secret keys okay for user one and generation of the second key for the second user and uh, this is all about okay the process so it begins with the uh, global public element then uh, generations of public keys and thereafter generation of private keys okay all these things so let's see uh, what how does it work in the picture we have two users okay alice and bob so here okay alice and bob share a prime okay q this is the key okay the public key q and alpha such as alpha is less than q and alpha is a primitive okay uh, root of q and here alice and bob share a prime okay q and alpha this is exactly the same one okay the same thing so uh, the public keys has been shared by uh, users all the users if it is one two three or four okay all these users share the public keys that's okay thereafter okay generation of okay private key begins from here so ls generates a private key okay let's say xa and such that xa is less than q and Bob also generate a private key, okay, XB. It is just like this one. Okay, thereafter, uh, the Alice calculates a public key. So Alice again, okay, calculates the public key, YA, which is different from the private one, okay. And the, the private one is XA, the public one is YA. And it, can, it computes, okay, uh, the public key, YA, such as, alpha to the power x a mod q some mathematical term okay because you know in cryptography there are a lot of mathematical terms so just try to understand the mathematics behind such kind of okay happening so uh, in the same way okay bob calculates a public key y b okay, this one and it is just like this one alpha to the power x b okay mod q so y a and y b are ready that's okay like this thereafter okay uh, if you think about alice okay after generating such kind of a okay, y a okay public key it will okay send to bob here so the public key generated by the alice will be sent to the bob so now bob will receive the alice public key not the private okay y a so now Bob has two keys together, YA, which is received by the LS itself. And also, okay, it has own, okay, public key, uh, the private key, remember, X, B, okay? These two keys are with the Bob. And how about the Alice? She has also, uh, if the Bob has sent the public key, YB, so it will be received to the else end so it will be y okay a like this oh sorry not y n y b actually okay this one because uh it is generated by the ls okay y a uh, bob has generated y b the public key so y b will be with the uh, ls and also uh, the private key of ls which is x a okay so now both will have two different keys okay xb x uh, yb xa and ya xb okay, like this so this is all about this one okay thereafter okay, exchange of the keys of public keys and be uh, pay attention that the private keys can never be shared okay by anyone so the private keys are always with the Alice keys, Alice private key will be with the Alice and Bob's private key will be with the Al and Bob's okay domain. So it will be not exchanged. Only the public keys are always exchanged. Okay, so this is how it works.
So the after, okay, uh, the Alice, okay, calculates shared secret key because it got um, Bob's private uh, public key. So it can now calculate using that Bob's public key. It can calculate the shared secret key k. Okay, y b to the power x a mod q. And in the same way, Bob can also access uh, compute the secret key of okay, uh, Alice by okay, k equal to y a okay, to the power x b mod q, this one. So this is how it works, okay, all these things. The only problem here is the exchange of the keys, this one and this one. If a hacker gets somehow a trap inside the exchange of the keys, okay, during the transmission of the keys, uh, I mean, uh, sending the keys from one location to another one, then uh, it will uh, play a significant role. It can attack the account of the Alice or Bob and it can hack both the Alice and Beth, uh, Bob's, okay, computers or all the resources altogether. So this is the only thing it, it may happen. But anyway, uh, except this, these two, both of them are very secure itself, okay? So now, okay, we will see, okay, the algorithm working. Now we got the idea that uh, both of them have one another's, okay, public keys and they have their own private keys. So let's see uh, how does it look like. So here's an example of uh, Defi Hellman key exchange okay, problem. So the security of Defi Hellman key exchange lies in the fact that while it is relatively easy to calculate okay, exponential okay, modulo a prime, okay, uh, we are talking about this one at this moment, right? So don't to confuse too much, that's okay. So it is very difficult to calculate, okay, discrete logarithm. So we are not, okay, involving with the logarithm. So here, okay, we have some kind of easiness because of the computational, okay, uh, fairness, that's all. For large prime numbers, okay, the later task is considered infeasible. So if we have a bigger prime numbers, okay, P or Q, then it will be problem. Otherwise, the rest of the things are okay. So uh, here's an example, okay, uh, exactly what is happening. Our key exchange is based on the use of the prime number. Okay, let's say we have a uh, 353, okay, the number. And a primitive root of 353, okay, in this case is a, uh, it is actually alpha, okay, equal to three. So A and B select, okay, secret keys. So these are the secret keys, XA, let's say, for example, 97, and XB is, okay, for Alice and for Bob, okay, B for Bob. So for the Bob, okay, let's say it is three, three. So these are the private, okay, keys of both of them. So each, okay, compute is public key by this, okay, equation. Remember, this is the equation for both of them. So now we have the such kind of computation it begins from here. So Alice will compute like YA, okay, like this way, three to the power 97. So the three to the power 97, this one, X, okay, XA, secret key, the private key, 97, mod of 353, 353 is the prime number, remember? Okay, so this is, okay, uh, the computational part of the mathematical part. So by computing, okay, uh, it will turn out to be 40, the result. In the same way, the Bob will compute the YB, okay, the public key of, okay, um, so it will be three to the power two, three, three, we are talking about here, okay, this one and mod of 353, 248, this one. So this is how, okay, the computations are carried out. Uh, this is the formula, and we use the formula using different, okay, numerical values, that's all. 
very easy very simple that's okay so after they exchange public keys okay each can compute the common secret key as i told you just now so a compute okay k uh, i mean alice computes key as y to the power yb to the power xa uh, mod okay don't think it it is just big x, x and small a okay x and uh, mod 353 okay equal to 248 to the power 97 mod 353 equal to 160 so here okay uh, yb to the power xa xa 97 and xb is this one 248 so 248 to the power 97 mod of okay 353 okay 353 this one we are talking about this one 353 okay the q value the prime number okay that's all so and in the same way bob also computes okay k key y a okay y a is this one 40 okay see and to the power 233 and x b x b is here okay yeah this one two three 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 so this one x b uh, and mod of 353 okay we are talking about the prime number 353 that's all so this is all about okay this one so uh, now we can see okay they are exactly the same because uh the alice computes key as okay, 160 and bob computes 160 okay the same so both the value of key are the same okay 116 that will be the secret key okay which is shared between these two people so the secret keys are now shared okay but it is not shared by sending the key from one person to the another one it is just okay calculated within the computational okay resources of that person okay so uh, if you can pay attention only one thing has been sent from alice to bob or bob to alice the public key not the private key okay and it is computed the private key has been computed using these computations okay like this one so uh, this is why it is considered as more secure in comparison to other means of okay uh, key exchanges right let's see okay the next thing uh, there's another kind of attack in the computer security which is called as man in the middle attack and i have a fig figure also if you can see here uh, it is okay just like this one uh, alice and bob are the two users and they are okay uh, i think i talked just now okay or about this one exactly so man in the middle for hacking the keys or information so the same thing so uh, the, the primary key okay xa which belongs to the alice the public key uh, i mean not primary actually i should say it is a private key the okay the private key and the public key is ya so xa is the private key ya is the public key okay and these are held with the held with the alice in the same way okay bob has two keys if you can remember the private key xb and the public key yb okay now okay let's say uh, we have okay exchange scenario within this okay uh, alice and bob okay scenario uh, exchange of the keys scenario so it is just like ya okay the public key has been sent by alice but in the mid of that one Darth is an is an attacker okay hacker he tries to hack the okay some of the information so what it does okay it will take the private key x okay d1 x d2 okay and using the public key y d1 y d2 okay it will try to manipulate the sent key of okay of the alice the public key y a so it will try to manipulate ya and, and it will try to use okay ya to bring the uh, exact code of the secret okay or public uh, private key so 
using all these okay public key and private key of the hacker okay dot it will try to find out exactly uh, what is the private key behind okay, this public key so it will always try to compute all these okay uh, mis uh, computation for getting the private key of Alice or Bob okay. so okay let's see what happened thereafter okay it will after okay uh, manipulating all this uh, using the private key okay keys and public key of the attacker and using YA it will send a uh, pseudo or you can say a, a kind of okay uh, uh, attractive okay uh, message like okay I got Y and it will be sent to Alice as a pretending that it is Bob okay not the dot attacker so it will pretend that I am Bob and I am sending you this key now so Y D2 and remember Y D2 is the public key so Y D2 is sent to the Alice okay that I got uh, your uh, I got my key okay this is my key you sent me keys okay of public one and I am sending you my key okay the public one so it is just bringing a kind of okay uh, fictitious okay scenario for the Alice okay let's say uh, after that the secret key okay k2 okay is computed using d2 okay the the key which is sent by the dart okay so it is using the same key which is sent by the hacker or attackers okay uh, it will be manipulated as uh, by the Alice okay oh if you are Alice uh, if you are Bob then uh, I should compute your okay using your key uh, YD2 uh, the secret key exactly so and she will okay uh, buy okay uh, such kind of manipulation wrong manipulation actually it will create different secret key which is not exactly shared by the mob but shared by the attacker so in that case the secret key is shared in between Alice and Dart okay they can now send and receive data okay comfortably let's say Alice sends some sensitive information to the Bob thinking that this is the Bob okay is the Bob and then uh, the attacker will apply his own okay public key okay uh, it will generate its uh, or decode the message that's all okay. so this is how uh, it is at the attacks is going to happen from L side in the same way okay it, it could be happen to the Bob side let's say the attacker has sent to the Bob okay its own okay YD1 public key that okay I am Alice this time and I am sending you my key okay and just send me your key okay and, and then Bob will send his own key okay and thereafter the, the trouble begins right now okay so this is a whole scenario of this these kinds of attack that is what called uh, known as man in the middle attack okay. so I, I hope you got the idea the main idea behind such kind of things so that's why it is called man in the middle attacker in the middle that's all you can say like this one so this is all about okay this kind of attack okay uh, so uh, let's finish up this one so the protocol okay as depicted just now in the figure again uh, in man in the middle attack okay it's suppose Alice and Bob wish to exchange key and uh, dot is a proxy is the adversary the attack proceeds as follow okay dot prepare uh, I told you the whole process the whole scenario that's all okay. so uh, I should not re repeat the same thing that's okay okay let's move to the next one so uh, okay uh, the Bob and Alice think that they share a secret key but instead of Bob and dot share secret key k1 and Alice and Dart share secret key K2. Okay, remember just now I told you in the figure. Uh, all future okay communication, okay all future communication between Bob and Alice is 
compromised in this way. And Alice, whatever Alice will send, it will be encrypted uh, as an encrypted message. It will be recovered. It, it will be decrypted by the okay, attack. And at the same time, okay, uh, yeah, the recovery by the okay, the attacker, and also okay, uh, whatever does send okay, let's say the attacker sends Bob okay something like Bob E K one M okay message, and then okay, it will be recovered. Uh, I mean, bring back to the attacker itself uh, from the Bob okay as a reply. So everything is in mass using such kind of communication between uh, Alice and Bob because of the middle man. I mean, the, the Darth, the attacker, has intervened in, in between these two people. That's all. So this is the main idea behind such kind of things. So uh, the key exchange protocol is vulnerable, number one, uh, to such an attack because it does not authenticate okay, the participants so the this key exchange protocol is very sensitive vulnerable it can be attacked to such an attack okay because uh, the key exchange protocol doesn't authenticate the participant that uh, one thing is authentication it is mandatory to pro, uh, to prevent from such kind of attack let's say uh, in this scenario i will show you one more time Let's say uh, first the authentication process okay has been okay completed. Thereafter, exchange of key is happening. Then le there's less possibility that we will get in trouble later. Let's say authentication process for Alice and Bob happened. That Bob will ask okay Alice authentic authenticity by uh, asking okay what is your ID password something like this and then okay. Uh, or just accessing uh, some of the authentic okay, uh, message information uh, from Alice. And Alice will ask okay, Bob some of the authentic okay, information by exchanging authentication process at first and then sharing the keys later okay, will prevent such kind of attack. This is the main idea. Uh, I mean, to prove that Alice will prove that she is Alice, and Bob will prove that she he is uh, the Bob, right? So just like okay, ID and password, we prove to the computer that I am the real person, I am the user. Okay, that's all authentication. So that's all about this one man in the middle attack. Or uh, let's say okay, digital signature standard. So the digital signature standard, okay, DSS, okay, uh, it is okay. Since a long time, Federal Information Process, Processing Standard. Okay? It, uh, it specifies a suite of okay, uh, algorithms that can be used to generate digital signatures. So there's a suite of info, uh, algorithm, a collection of, you okay, can think like a set of algorithms that can be used to generate, okay, that can be used to generate uh, digital signatures. Because uh, all electronic transactions can okay, verify using digital signatures. So that's why we need digital signatures. So the set of algorithms okay, used to generate the digital signatures. And those digital signatures are used to authenticate someone. Authorization, okay, of, uh, I must say authenticate okay, the people first that he is the real person or she is the real person. That's all. Okay, uh, the Federal Information Processing Standard FIPS, okay, known as Digital Signature Standard. So we have a set of rules, okay, that is under the DSS, Digital Signature Standard. That standard is followed by all the uh, international, okay, transactions, electronic transaction, even in sending the money, even in the sending uh, some other uh, secret messages among the users okay all these things so we are talking about okay uh, now the digital signature algorithm dsa which is based on dss digital signature standard okay? so algorithm is 
the implementation of the digital signature standard that's all okay so dss okay digital signature standard uses dsa digital signature algorithm that is designed to provide only the digital signature okay function so uh, it cannot be used for encryption or key exchange so the difference is okay this is the difference the dsa okay cannot be used okay for encryption or decryption or exchange of the keys okay so this is different from rsa and uh, defi okay algorithm that's all so this is okay the main difference between these two so using uh, sha and dsa okay uh, now we got the solution like this way that signature okay generation has been okay implemented first message has been sent secure hash algorithm were generated thereafter and message digest okay in combination with the hash algorithm and the message itself okay uh, it has been okay put in the process dsa sign operator means signatures has been put inside okay this uh, message together and using the private key it has been encrypted right so finally it is completely okay secure data or message which is sent to the receiver so from the sender okay we send this message to the receiver and the receiver will okay have okay uh, receive such kind of package and use his own okay public key and do the same thing and it must have also own uh, digital signatures of okay, the verification okay, that's all which is needed uh, on the other hand okay let's say if we are from the other side uh, it it is almost the same thing okay but uh, let's see how the verification begin so signatures are verified at first that uh, okay alice has sent me the message with her signature so signatures are at first verified okay and the within the message okay secure hash algorithm were generated uh, together with the message okay and also at the same time okay uh, dsa okay verify operation is okay completed by doing so using such messages like this one okay and uh, as you can see it is applying the public key of the receiver let's say bob okay and the digital okay message which is received by the uh, bob from alice and okay so if the verification of signature is qualified then okay i mean the after the second stage will begin that okay no uh, now we can trust this message that's okay this message is from alice really okay otherwise we will uh, keep it as a fake message okay not the real one no signature ver in case of no signature verification Uh, I mean the signature verification failed. Okay, in this case. Okay, so this is all about very simple, very simple. That's all. So I think probably this is the last one. Elliptic curve. Okay, cryptography. So elliptic curve. Okay, uh, as you can see, this was just like an ellipse. Okay, this is all about this one. So the principal attraction of elliptic curve cryptography (ECC) okay which is compared to rsa most of the time is that it appears to offer okay it appears to offer equal security so uh, it is considered this one is exactly okay in the same way equally secured like rsa but there are some problem i will tell you later so equally secure for okay similar bit of size so if we put uh, let's say 1024 bit okay of both of rsa and ecc then we say uh, they are equally qualified for same level of security but uh, 
but but the advantage is they are okay much robust uh, it uh, they the processing overhead is less in case of ecc because it is much quicker than rsa but okay let's see what is the other side the other side is okay the only re, okay recently uh, these products have begun to appear okay so this is not the oldest technology this is the latest one that's okay and the problem is okay uh, uh, the believability is less okay the confidence is less in comparison to the rsa that's why we are using rsa much more nowadays uh, the other thing is uh, there has been okay sustained uh, crypto analytic interest in probing for weaknesses. So also, okay, there were reports of okay uh, weaknesses in this ECC, also there, and also okay the confidence level. That's what I am talking about. Okay, so the confidence level in ECC is not yet high because okay it is the latest one and it is not well. Uh, practically okay uh, verified many times and also okay uh, the technique is based on use of mathematical construct uh, which is known as elliptic curve so this is okay elliptic curve this one and uh, that's all okay about this one i think not too much that's okay so uh, this is another cryptographic okay technique elliptic curve Okay, uh, before ending, okay, I want to show you some of the example. And where do you find such kind of example? It is at the end of, I will let me write here so that you can remember. It is at the end of your book, okay? So at the end of your book, you will find this, these examples. Your main book, the textbook, okay? Uh, computer security by William Sterling. You will find okay these examples at the end of at the end akhir, at the end of your book, and from where I have taken this because as per the coordinator these are important. So and that's why I'm telling you. So to okay these are simply example. Don't get uh, don't get confused too much. Okay, don't worry. It is just very simple. So try to understand, very simple. Uh, these are exactly the same as I told you before about in the examples of RSA and DF, okay, algorithm. So DH, sorry, DH algorithm. So these are exactly the same. And uh, it is repeated actually. So you may guess that there may be some question, okay, for the examination even for the final examinations, I believe. So let's see, okay. Uh, th so this is just one example, okay. The key for RSA algorithm are generated by, this is the set of rules that I have shown you earlier, okay. We have to create, we have to think about or choose two distinct okay, prime numbers, P and Q, and uh, compute P into Q, okay. The multiplication, which is N, and the after, uh, phi n is a function which is uh, phi p and phi q uh, exactly it is p minus 1 into q minus 1 n minus p plus q minus 1 okay so uh, this is also the same okay phi n the function and also okay choose we have to choose e an integer e said that this one is less than e which is less than phi n so e is in between 1 and phi n the number value of e should be between 1 and phi n okay this one so and uh, greatest common divisor okay gcd of e and phi n should be 1 okay this one like this okay should be 1 that is E and phi N are co-prime together, okay? They are co-prime. And determine, we have to determine uh, a number D, 
uh, as d mod phi n function, which is equal to 1, okay? Uh, that is, d is a modular, okay, multiplicative inverse of d, e, okay, modulo phi n, and keep d as secret, that's all. So, if you can guess it now, okay, the secret keys, uh, I mean, private keys and public key scenario. So, the public key will be e n, and private key will be d n, okay? So, this is all about this, okay? Method, okay? Way of generation of such kind of RSA algorithm keys, okay? Like this one, public and private. And C will be, okay? The next one, uh, as a cipher text. And M is a mass plain text, okay? Here. And uh, de uh, the decryption is calculated by m equal to c to the power d mod n okay so once uh, we during the encryption convert plain text into cipher text okay remember from m to c now we are converting opposite decrypt so from c to m now okay so this is all about this one Okay, uh, the examples are, uh, as I told you earlier, P, Q, okay, P is 3, Q is 11, and then multiply together, and thereafter, okay, very simple math, okay, not Einstein mathematics, okay, and also uh, uh, P minus 1 into Q minus 1, okay, all these, choose E, okay, such so that uh, E and N are co-prime, okay, so let E is 7, assume then we will be able to compute d okay and and thereafter okay uh, we can get the public key finally and private key that's all the same method as i shown you earlier and the methods are okay already exemplified in the in the circuit okay, example so very simple very simple so that's all so uh, the same thing is here, okay? If we want to encrypt, it will be like this. If we want to decrypt, it will be like this, okay? So encrypting, encryption of the message, the plain text, the main message, is, it will be like this. Decryption of the cipher text, okay? Encrypted message. Decryption of encrypted message. I will repeat, okay? Encryption, decryption of encrypted message will be like this, okay? So, okay, like this one. And also, there's another example. Example two, okay, let's say P is 11 and Q is 13, then multiplication will be like this, okay? The phi n, the function will be like this, okay? And the after, okay, E, we, let's assume, suppose that E is 11, okay? So, this is an important point. We have to assume one by one, okay, the possible possibilities of actually the possible values of E or possibilities of our E itself, the value of E, okay, uh, by consideration of this special condition that E should be 1 to phi n. Phi n means it should be between 1 to 120, okay, phi n, the function. So, we should consider each and every possibility from 1 to 120 and finally we should find okay e which is okay uh, e and set that e and n are co-prime co together okay that's all this means co-prime means uh, as i told you before remember last lecture i told you that e should be also prime and also in comparison to the function okay, itself so if you divide 120 by 11, can you divide it completely? No, not really, because uh, 11 is a prime number, okay? And 120, okay, uh, is, uh, if you divide 120 by 11, so you will not get a whole number, okay? It will be in point decimal. So that's why it is considered as a prime number in, for this number, okay? 
it is 11 is a prime member for this number okay you can think like this also in the same way that's why it is called co, co prime okay co prime so that's all okay for this one uh, also okay at the same time if you say okay uh so this is okay the same thing d is 11 uh and then one solution could be d is 11 and one so 121 d 120 okay all these things and thereafter okay in the step number six we are now okay going for message which is m equal to seven and decrypt the message okay uh using okay uh this formula and thereafter, okay, uh, 7 to the power 11, 7 to the power 11. This one, mod 143 and so on. Decrypt, just reverse, okay. All these, okay. So, uh, these are, okay, some of the examples that you should try to understand. Very easy, very simple. And th this is the last slide, I think. So, here, okay, uh, DH key exchange. In this one, DH key exchange, we are talking about, okay, uh, the same way very simple okay example here okay, as you can see alice and bob okay have uh, uh the keys okay p and g let's say and you will find all these examples at the end of the textbook okay uh computer security by william Stalin. that's all so uh alice and bob okay agree to use the prime numbers p and g like this way and then Alice chooses a secret E, okay, secret integer A equal to six, and then sends Bob, okay, A, uh, Bob A, uh, send the mass, uh, the key, okay, to the Bob G to the power, this one actually, okay, G to the power A. So G to the power means five to the power, remember, five to the power six. So five G to the power a uh, a is here g g5 g to the power a 5 to the power 6 and mod p this one mod p p is 23 remember so it will be computed and finally we will get a okay in the same way okay uh, bob will do the exactly same thing for alice okay and it will uh, be like b equal to 19 and okay after that uh, alice and bob compute their secret key okay using their own formula like this one and this one so it is every uh, it is very very simple everything is very simplified so just try to practice all these things so